This book of mine here, The Prosecution of George W. Bush for Murder, believe it or not, I do not say... You want him to hold it higher? Okay, yeah. You're being funny now, aren't you? You are being funny. Okay. Mr. Billy, so you may continue. Yes. Uh, believe it or not, I do not say in this book where I'm asking that George Bush be prosecuted for murder that he lied about weapons of mass destruction. Actually, he did lie about weapons of mass destruction, but that's not why I'm saying he should be prosecuted for murder. The evidence that he lied about weapons of mass destruction, by the way, which is not the basis for this book, are right in front of me. I have it right here. Here's the evidence. This document here is the National Intelligence Estimate. I didn't name it before. I talked about a classified report. This is it right here, October 1st, 2002, classified NIE report. It's called Iraq's Continuing Programs of Weapons of Mass Destruction. In this document right here, the CIA and 15 other U.S. intelligence agencies use words like this. We assess that or we judge that. Hussein has weapons of mass destruction. This document here is the white paper that was given to you folks here in Congress and the American people and the words we assess that, we judge that, were removed. Meaning that you folks here heard a fact and in fact it was only an opinion. Number two, on nuclear weapons. This document right here, the classified report, has several important dissents. This document right here, the white paper that you folks were given and the American people, all of those dissents were deleted. That's where the and were those dissents presented at the UN? Pardon? Were those dissents presented at the UN? I'm sorry? Were those dissents, were, not, were they presented at the UN, when the presentation was made at the UN, no. were those dissents presented there? No. No, but the dissents that are in the classified document right here do not appear do not appear in this white paper that you folks were given. There is the lies about mass destruction. But here's the point I want to make. And I really feel, and it sounds presumptuous of me, I guess Mr. Uh, Franks already knows uh, enough that he doesn't want to hear. But here's the, uh, here's the evidence that uh, I want to present to this um, committee, that weapons of mass destruction, that's not the issue here. The issue is not whether Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. If that were the issue, Pakistan, China, Russia, Britain, France, Mr. North Chairman, Korea. The gentleman's they'll... time has long ago expired. Well, wait a while. I'm talking about something I think pretty important, okay? Mr. Chairman, the gentleman is talking about classified information well, in this meeting. No. No, no, wait a while. And this the gentleman's time right has expired, and I insist that you impose the rules on this. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, longer. Mr. Chairman, let's have order. Uh, the general lady asked a question, and after it okay. is responded to, her time will have been expired. I thank the gentleman for his indulgence. This document right here has been declassified. This one here was an unclassified version, so you're wrong. But here's the point I want to make. Here's the point I want to make. Britain, France, <laughs> Russia, China, Pakistan, yeah. they have weapons of mass destruction. Are we going to war with them? No. Why? I'll tell you why. Because the only issue, not two issues or three, the only issue is whether a nation that has weapons of mass destruction is an imminent threat to the security of this country. That's the only issue. And 16 U.S. intelligence agencies in this previously classified document, including the CIA, all said unanimously that Hussein was not an imminent threat to the security of this country and they knew all about these weapons of mass destruction they thought they did actually Hussein did not have weapons of mass destruction let's overlook that fact they thought these 16 US agencies thought that Hussein had weapons of mass destruction and they still said he was not an imminent threat to the security of this country it's a terrible non sequitur to say that just because you have weapons of mass destruction, you're an imminent threat to the security of this country. The proposition that Hussein was an imminent threat to the security of this country is outrageous on his face. Why? I'll tell you why. Hussein Chairman, wanted I'm to live. Getting really close to an Hussein aneurysm wanted here. You to think live, you and help you want to live, you do not attack the United States of America or help anyone else do so. And all 16 U.S. intelligence agencies agree. The man is repeating himself, you. and long ago the, the gentlelady's time has expired. The gentlelady's time has expired. I thank the chairman.
my experiences over there were violating people in their own homes. What else is there to talk about? You know, I, you can't force your will on people in their own country and say that it's justified and say that it's a mission that you need to complete and finish doing. It's not honorable, it's not dignity, and it's not something we should associate ourselves with as the American people, or as people in general for that matter. We gotta stop drawing these lines and declaring war on people and calling them our enemies, which, which rationalizes doing things that we would never otherwise justify doing. We can't put things in a different context and claim that it justifies the very things we accuse them of doing. Torture, mass graves, we're torturing people in Iraq every day. We're creating bigger graves than Saddam Hussein ever created. When are we going to realize this? When are we going to realize that if somebody ever does actually bring a dirty bomb in the United States, it's probably going to be the kid whose toy box we dumped out after we shot up his house. 9-11? We need to think about pre-9-11, because to prevent 9-11, if it even did happen the way they said it happened, would have involved nothing more than putting an air marshal in every airplane. That's all it would have took, if it happened the way they said it happened. So we'll go with that for now. So why can they still not tell us that there's an air marshal in every airplane, and why are people still walking through our borders? We're avoiding these domestic measures that it would take to actually prevent the problems that are terrifying our people into thinking we need to go offensively prevent. Everything we're doing overseas is not helping what they're telling us the problem is. Eli Israel, I got back from Iraq two weeks ago. <laughs> Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. <laughs> Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. I'm not dumb, dude. I tell you what. Shit! Fuck! Oh, my ear! We need to get the fuck out of here! Nope, no weapons over there. <laughs> Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. Nope, no weapons over there. Maybe under here. <laughs> Oops, this photo wasn't supposed to be in here. This is a skull and bone secret signal. <laughs> this is a skull and bone secret signal. This is a skull and bone secret signal. This is a skull and bone secret signal. <laughs>